and welcome back to Folkscape Live here from the Sidmouth uh, Folk Festival. Our afternoon concert here starts off with the Eliza Carthy Trio, and then, uh, no, it doesn't, it's the second half is the Eliza Carthy Trio. The first half will be uh, George Sansom and Matt Quinn. I'm very glad to say I have two thirds of the Eliza Carthy Trio with me here Eliza herself and uh, Saul Rose. Uh, two out of three ain't bad. Thank you both very much for joining me. Hello. Uh, Eliza, I'm going to start off with you, if I may. I feel as if I'm talking to the sort of the, the Habsburgs or the Bourbons <laughs> of the folk world, in that you're, you are a member of an enormous dynasty. I've d done a quick tot up. You must tell me if I'm wrong about this. You've got uh, 13 solo albums and 14 with various members of your family. What's it like being a princess? Yeah. <laughs> Today, kind of sticky. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> OK, Sticky Princess. That's the ne that should be the name of your next tour. Wow. Um, That's not a bad idea, actually. But it, it, it must, must be a great joy to be always surrounded. I mean, almost born genetically into this beautiful music. It was a wonderful way to grow up, definitely. Yeah, with everybody singing, huge family parties, and, of course, the Watson family singers as well. It's, it, yeah, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, the clan, the singing part of the clan has gotten smaller over the years, but it's, you know, it's still, still a huge family, so, yeah, it's great. And here you are, you've formed a trio. Is this just for, a, for this tour or, or for Sidmouth, or is this a, a, permanent, a permanent setup now with Saul and, uh, and David? It's just for this album, conversations we've had before, for now. Um, we've, uh, we've been touring all over the country this year. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been going really well. Saul and I have played together for a long time and um, we wanted to bring someone else into the situation. And uh, he, he was like, right, okay, well, we'll all bring what we bring. It's a trio, it's not me, I'm not the boss, you know. So we all bring what we bring and, uh, and it's, it's kind of thirds and thirds all round. So we've all done our bit. But Dave, Dave actually only only agreed to join if we agreed to stop playing stuff we've been playing for thirty years. That's <laughs> fair. Let's find some new things. Totally yeah. fair. And he brought he brought a lot to the table actually, which is great. Well, it is a good, good idea to keep things fresh, and we and, and nature of folk it tends to be absolutely fine to sing a song that's two and a half uh, two two and a half centuries old. Mm. Nice to bring something a little bit original and fresh to it. Is that what we're going to be hearing this afternoon? It's mostly trad, but it's just different. It's different stuff. It's just new material to us. Um, but you know we're playing we're playing a tune today called the Downfall of Gin, which was written around the time that the government decided to uh, tax uh, gin makers and taxed all the small batch gin makers out of London. Well, there were ten thousand at one point, and Dave brought that tune. It's quite hard to play, but we'll we'll, uh, we'll do what we can. Would a little gin help? I think it might. It? Yeah. Yes, it does help. It's funny that. <laughs> But, um, but, yeah, Dave's been doing a lot of research into uh, Essex traditional music, so he's really brought that to the table, which has been great, sort of different versions of things like The Blind Beggar of Bethnal Green, for instance. He also, uh, he's also a very accomplished classical and jazz player as well, and he's really into Turlock O'Carolan, so he's brought, he's brought things like Planxty Charles Coote into the mix as well. Uh, so a little, a little bit of an Irish influence, although we do remain mostly, mostly English. Yeah. Uh, and so that's that's what you will be hearing this afternoon. Will that be qu quite a lot of work coming off the new album? I think everything we're playing All today is on the new album. Yeah, literally everything. There will be people in the audience shouting for old standards, you know. They'll be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, luckily for us, they don't get to write the set list. <laughs> we enjoy their tears as well. We like that. You feed on them, don't you? I yeah. do, I feed, yeah. on, feed on tears. <laughs> tell me about the new... First of all, tell me where, where people can get their hands on this new album. How do you get, how do you get to Bandcamp. it? Bandcamp. Bandcamp, wonderful website. Just remember, remind us of its name. Bandcamp.com. No, the name of the album. <laughs> oh, Conversations We've Had Before, the Eliza Carthy Trio. And Bandcamp's a wonderful website where... Um, the, the artist gets most of the money, um, unlike a lot of record retailers who take a large cut. Bandcamp is for musicians, so it's the best place to buy music if you're going to buy music, not just from us, from anyone, yeah. This is the first digital-only release I've ever done. Have you ever done one before? Uh, no, it's the same. Yeah. Same first, yeah. Um, so the people that come to the shows actually 
buy the download of the album by using their phones, using QR codes, which feels very, very sci-fi, very Jetsons. And then we go home in our flying cars. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say, perhaps we're, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from the inside here as we're streaming this concert, trying to get an audience that's bigger than the one that you can just fit into one tent here on the ham, or the, of people who can travel all this way down to Devon. But is that a good thing? Is the fact that vinyl, tape, uh, CD no longer exists really. These are all ancient, antique things. Is this a good thing for musicians? Because musicians are famously poor. <laughs> yes, we are. And, and it isn't gone, uh, but it's adapting, and we must adapt with it. So to have a digital-only release, I think, is a good thing. But, you know, the, the album that we did with Eliza's Bigger Band, The Restitution, had a limited run of vinyl. So it's still happening, you know, uh, I think... You just have to pitch it right and yeah, try and try and judge the moment. And for us, the digital release was a no-brainer. It was quick and painless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of people, especially within our genre, but but a lot of people in uh, you know music fans do still buy vinyl. They buy special editions. They buy limited editions. They buy your sort of coffee table pieces of artwork, and they're sort of seen as much more prestigious and you know, something you can hold in your hand something you can smell when you open it kind of thing um, so it's not that I don't think vinyl's gone away and I heard that tape's coming back yeah, which yeah, is hilarious yeah people are putting stuff out on cassette which is, which is yeah, brilliant so, suits my old car <laughs> <laughs> but it's like we say we, know, you, we have to adapt everybody has to adapt so. yeah, but it's so the joy you mentioned the artwork it's the sleeve notes as well isn't it and, it's, and you mentioned the smell I can't buy a new book without sniffing the, the spine uh, <laughs> but that might be a little problem of my own um, <laughs> tell me tell me but, I, but that the, physical, the physicality, the actual recording holding in your hand is, is part of the art, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. And you can actually, we do, have, we do have sleeve notes for the conversations we've had before. You can download them in PDF form from the website. So. I'm beginning to feel like a grumpy old person having just heard what I've just said. <laughs> um, but that's all right, I'm at the Sidmouth Folk Festival. Uh, what, how important is Sidmouth to you, Elaine? Very important. I mean, aside from the fact that my father's the patron... I've been coming here since before I was born. I think my mum came here the year she was pregnant with me because it's, it's my birthday in two weeks. So, um, yeah, so I've, I've been here since before, uh, lots and lots of times. I suspect there's quite a lot of begetting and conceiving going on in Bulverton campsite most years uh, here. <laughs> well, uh, what, what happens in the tent stays in the tent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I take it you're an old hand here as well, Sue? Yeah, I think, I, I think my first Sidmouth was 75 um, and I've not missed very many. Um, over the years. Now, I absolutely love it. I live for it. Why is it so important? Why, is, why does this thing have this incredible atmosphere, this incredible community that's unlike other... I mean, apart from the fact that it's a week long, but it's, un, in so many, it's unlike any other festival I've known? Well, I think you, if you take the, the location um, and the fact that the festival is spread out over the town, it's not all in one place. A lot of festivals are just in one field. Whether they're multiple marquees or not, they're in one site. And this is all over the shop. You know, I, I got a bus from the campsite this morning with all my accordions and uh, I, I love it, I absolutely love it. And you get to see people, you get to talk to them and, you, you know, sometimes when we do a gig, we, you know, we finish the gig and we go backstage and say hello to the audience, but that's about it. And then we go to our hotel and we don't see them. When we're here, you're amongst it the whole, the whole time. So for me, it takes me an hour to walk down the Esplanade because I have to stop and talk to a thousand people and I love that it's absolutely brilliant yeah my daughter hates it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I bet yeah yeah there's a lot but of how old is she she's 12 there's a well lot she hates everything then pretty much she didn't like the violin last night she was saying she, she was saying because I had the windows of the hotel room open when we, we got in quite late and she's saying, Mummy, why can I why can I hear violins everywhere? I said, Darling, that's the Irish pipe. She said, I don't care, it sounds like a violin. I don't like violins. Who would complain about hearing violins everywhere in the night? How, well, it's, uh, there we are. No romance in her sock. There will be later on. Thank you both so much for talking to me today. It's been an absolute joy. I'll let you get away because you're back on stage in probably less, a little bit more than an hour, aren't you? So I better, better let you go and sort yourselves out. Have a wonderful afternoon. I hope you enjoyed as much as I know the audience will. Thank, Thank you. you. See you a bit later.